almost all the churches in the Bible drift and get screwed up. Paul tells the Galatians, he goes, who bewitched you? What happened to you guys? He goes, I feel like I wasted all that time with you. Then you read the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, and he's like telling the Corinthians, what is wrong with you guys? There's divi- I heard there's divisions among you. He goes, like, some are saying, I follow this guy and this guy, this guy. He goes, was I crucified for you? Why are you following me? Didn't I tell you it was about Jesus? He goes, I hear that you guys sue each other seriously? I, I hear that there's immorality in the church and you're proud of it? I hear that people are getting drunk during communion? Drunk, communion, really? I hear that some of you don't even believe in the resurrection anymore? What in the world are you kidding me right now? And so I'm reading about all these churches that drift, and we can look and go, yeah, the church in Ephesus, yeah, the church in Laodicea, yeah, the church in Galatia, yeah, the church in Corinth. Hey, what about us? What about the church in America? Do we really think we're one of the good ones? In America, we have buildings that we call churches, and you go to them, and you sit for an hour, hour and a half, and someone teaches you a message. And then if you don't like it, you can go to the church down the street. That doesn't make sense biblically. You don't think about that. It's not about you. You don't go, I didn't like it, I didn't like it, I didn't like this. You go for him because we're concerned about what pleases him. That's what the gatherings were supposed to be. You think the high angels in Revelation 4 saying, holy, 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 at the end of the day go, I didn't really like it today. They got it. We are so self-centered. When's the last time you made a decision based upon him where you go, what would please you most? What would make you happiest? Because you're my God, you're my master. You know what would please you? Is he says, the, the ones who actually tremble at his word. You know what? Let's grab a couple friends and let's just read the word and tremble at it. Let's read through the book of Revelation. Let's just get together and read it. We don't need a great speaker. Let's just read it and tremble at it because his words are so much higher than mine. He wants us devoted to prayer. Let's get together and let's just seek his presence and see what happens because that actually is more exciting to me. That's more exciting. See, see what we did in the church was no one showing up for prayer meeting. Well, then let's change the prayer meeting. Let's make it shorter. Let's bring in a band. Let's bring in a speaker. And we'll save a few minutes for prayer so we can still call it prayer meeting. Let's change the prayer meeting. And now I'm at an age where I go, you know what? No, let's change your heart. Why don't you want to go to prayer? It's not the problem with the service. The problem is you. Do you not understand who he is? Do you not understand the price that was paid so that I can come into his presence and I'm talking to the one that's keeping us all alive right now? And he can change everything. How is that not exciting to you? Something's wrong with you. Nothing's wrong with the prayer meeting. I think we'd be blown away if we simplified and went back to early church. We read, don't you read about Acts 2 and go, oh, I wish I lived there where they just devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to prayer, to the fellowship, and the breaking of bread. We have an opportunity right now at this time in history. I am so pumped about it, but it's time to change the church and say, you know what? Enough of this consumer garbage. I'm gonna devote myself to these things because I think it's gonna actually become better as we strip away all these things we think we need.